Right, we've got this tube. We're going to cut it into three pieces. And we've got these flaps here. And then does Ollie want to be on camera? Not bothered. Ollie's here. He's going to try and make some fire beaters. So let's go. After 20 minutes of looking for bolts, I decided it was easier and quicker to just to go to the tool station and get a packet of bolts. So I've just done that. Obviously for the fire beaters. So we drilled it, not the stick in, so the tube doesn't collapse. And then we're going to put that on now and then melt two holes in it and then put the bolts in. The prototype there. <laughs> Job spanking the bench. Normally it's a monkey. It's all right, isn't it? I've even put that on the top to make it comfy. So, still got two to make. All the winter barley, obviously not the spring barley because we've not cut it yet, is in the shed. So we're going to shove all this up nice and tight now, get some fans in the top of it, and then we can start putting stuff back in front of it then. Missed him, just going out in his red van. Jed the fireman, but he's not actually a fireman, but he comes round every year and checks all the fire extinguishers, he's got the right pressure, including the baler and the combine. Anyway, just missed him, he's just on the offices as well. So remember the field of wheat that we drilled some spring barley into? Well, here it is. It's uh, in the tram lines, it's obviously came up through the wheat and it's now too high. In between the tram lines, it's also headed and only small heads because it's obviously been getting no light at all and it's really, really thin. See, so I think. I think we drilled it too early into the wheat and it, it's just it's just got going too fast the idea was that it just stay at like small leaves and then once the wheat was cut then it'd jump up flourishing head so whether we can mess around with the timings next year or it's never going to work who knows we might try it though and see what happens another year or maybe broadcast it in just before some rain see what that does maybe if it's established establishes a bit slower then it won't get up above the wheat lads are just sweeping out the rest of the rake stores and it's ready for it take a break next week so you can see pigeons have been annihilating this field here also it's very vulnerable because there's houses up there it gets set on fire quite a lot so i'm going to go and finish bill and joe's oilseed rape and then if this this is well ripe we will get this cut, get it in the shed, so it can't be set on fire and it can't be eaten. That's good. Joe's washed the windows while I've been, he's been waiting for me this morning. Gordon's bringing straw back down the field. Another well, nice field of oilseed rape and it's all stood up, which is good. Not like the one yesterday that had a bit of flat in it. So we can just go quite high, just take the canopy with the seeds and keep moving a bit quicker. There's the airport, there's Ryan Air flight, flight planes getting ready to go out. No easy jets about today for some reason. Does anyone know why that factory or Stanlow oil refinery has a flame sometimes? Watch here, just trimming the heads along the airport. But yeah, it's, uh, it often does that. I went straight down the tram line and GPSed it, but for some reason it's not quite matching up with the headlands and it's missing a foot, which is highly annoying because I've put all the way down the field. Let's see in the mirror. So I'll have to get that in a minute. It's fairly amazing that it can gobble all that in, obviously the height of it down there, and then it just comes out the back like dust, just confetti. It is, it is using 50% of the engine horsepower. So it's using 300 horsepower just to do that. I can see smoke and it's kind of where that field of wheat was I wanted to go and cut next. So it's black though, which is a bit unusual for wheat. So I don't know what's on fire. Just rung Andrew, he's going to go and investigate. It's 35.2 degrees currently. It's mopping up now, but the the oilseed rape is getting too dry, so we're probably going to get this field finished and we don't know whether we can carry on yet. Um, that is coolant. I need to find out where that's coming from now. So I'm guessing 
the other hose is split on the other side. Yeah, the hose is split there. So we were saying yesterday when they were here, we needed one of them hoses spur. And I said, the only thing is we also need four drums of coolant spur as well. Anyway, it's just failed. So I think maybe they need an upgrade on them pipes perhaps. But they've got one in, they've got the coolant and they're on the way with it. So hopefully they'll be here within half an hour. So at least I can uh, sit down and have my dinner. So we've got the air cut on, waiting for the pipe to turn up. And Joe's just been looking. 36 is the highest temperature where the station recorded. And this time last year, it was 16 degrees. Combine's over there. Turn the engine off, so the air con is not, not on. So it's on in here. The dinner delivery vehicle has arrived. It's come prepared. And the toolbox, is that two cans of spray? Where's the little tools? Where's all the tools? No. Then the other one. The other one. Spanners for the air. Oh, that's noisy. At least you've got the opening window. That's better. Can she see over the steering wheel? What's the hashtag for today's video? Women in ag. <laughs> Surrounded by them. I'm going to get. Yeah, so guess who put the pipe on without the Jubilee clip? We've sorted it. No dramas. And Kim's even brought a funnel. Where's the funnel? Is, is it a proper funnel? Like a joke. Yeah, that'll do. Is this a uh, proper coolant or Barbie coolant? Barbie coolant? It's a bit pink, isn't it? So we are back running. Big thanks to Maurice Caulfields for sending the part and the coolant straight away. And obviously Olivia's dropped that Corvus buggy off and hung on while Rob brought the tools up across the field and got it sorted. I probably had just about enough tools in my toolbox, but just an extra pair of hands was easier. So we're back going again now. We lost just, just over an hour, which isn't bad to be fair, considering we had to put three drums the coolant in it. But yeah, them pipes obviously that live up here obviously don't last too long so we maybe will change it for silicon ones or maybe when they built them this was built maybe 2020 when supply chains broken then i don't know i suppose they weren't really were they but anyway there's obviously a fault with them pipes rob's just arrived now with the fast track to get the header so we can go off cutting wheat that worked out pretty well. Andrew dropped the trailer before, then he's just come back with another one and he arrived just at the same time as we arrived. So we'll just get the header on now and uh, off we go. Two minutes side knife off job. And we are now cutting wheat. Golden air, making a dust. Just disking the top inch of that barley stubble. There's Bill now with a trailer for us as well. Just nicely hoovering up this week now. I mean, it's saying it's doing 8.3 tons of the hectare here. This is probably a decent bit of the field, sort of heaviest ground maybe. But there is some, some sort of flooded patches in it, and the headlands are quite poor because it had potatoes on it. But I don't know. I, I think it'd be lucky to average what we we call three tons of the acre maybe, which would be seven and a half tons of the hectare. I and mean, it's actually just under seven and a half at the moment. 7.3, 7.2. But it's quite a big headland all the way around this field as well, so that'll really pull the average down. Plenty of dust though. It's dry. So there's Rob going back with the buggy now. He's brought the fast track up and then Sam's following up on the buggy. Sam's gonna drive the fast track filling the trailers in the field. Then Rob is gonna shoot back, get the bailing up, bailing behind them trees there. It's handy that buggy because with Sam only being 16, he can't drive the big tractors on the road until he passes his car test. So that now he can get about with it. What do we think? Every little helps. bad load might have been a little bit spilled maybe we get some uh, silage sides for it or some greedy boards 
Uh, Rob's going back for the baler. They look a good pair, them two tractors. There's Sam now filling his second trailer up. So we filled the fast track one up before, now he's filling the fence up, and Andrew's shuttling it back to the yard. And then Bill, oh, I've already stalled it. Going a bit hard there, chopping. So it stops the front automatically. <laughs> and the filling auger, so we don't stall the combine. Because it's a little bit green, the crop, it's... Uh, but like I say, we were cutting it because we didn't want it burnt. Huge fire risk from this land. Yeah, so there we go. Sam's filling his second trailer now at the side of the combine. He's doing well. As long as he just drives in the right place, he's probably just needed to get over a little tiny bit. But yeah, you're using plenty of power at the moment. That auger takes a bit, zaps a bit of power when you turn it on, to be fair. <laughs> the other side of the airport now, so there's some more planes going in. It's been non stop today for the airport. Bill's just filling up now. Uh, and, Andrew, sorry, Robin is bailing behind them trees. You can see a little bit of dust. Gordon was also disking, but he's knocked off because all the dust was blowing towards the houses, so he's going to leave that for another day now. That's the barley stubble the Bill and Joe's that we combined last week. Just realised I've got a windscreen wiper and screen wash, so I've just wiped the window so you can see a lot better now. Got sent this before by Michael on Instagram, and there's been a big fire in South Yorkshire. So there's a quick clip of it, and you can see the scale of it and how we really needed to get this field cut because we didn't want anything like that. Anyway, you have just watched the video that I've just edited because I'm in a long straight field on GPS. So thank you everyone that's been watching. What has been the highest temperature that you have recorded today? 36.8 it got up to in our neck of the woods. Has anyone had any higher? Let me know in the comments. Also, don't forget if you made it this far, give it a thumbs up. And I must just say as well, we'll have a proper look tomorrow at that Corvus buggy. And if anyone is interested, I think we have got a demonstrator, that's Paxton's anyway. So get in touch with Olivia if you want a demo of one of them, because they look really good. They seem really good when we had a demo, so that's why we've got one. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you all tomorrow. Fingers crossed, no breakdowns tomorrow.